Welcome everyone on this 19th Sunday of the year. The theme of the Mass and the Scriptures is feeding and bread. Our opening hymn is We Come to Your Feast. We place upon your table In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. 
My dear friends, my sisters and brothers, let's prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins and calling to mind God's promise of forgiveness. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Christe, Christe eleison. Christe, Christe eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's celebrate our forgiveness. Glory to God, glory to God, Glory to the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father, to him be glory for ever, to him be glory for ever, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, Glory to the Spirit, to Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, may we love you in all things and above all things and reach the joy you prepared for us beyond all our imagining. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading is from the book of Kings, and it's a story of the prophet Elijah. We mentioned him last week, you remember, when the people mistook Jesus for Elijah come back to the earth again from God's presence. Now in this story, Elijah is sustained against all hope by bread from heaven, given to him by an angel, so he can continue his journey until he reaches the mountain of Horeb. Any mountain in the Old Testament is always a symbol of God's presence. Elijah went into the wilderness a day's journey and sitting under a furze bush wished he were dead. Lord, he said, I've had enough. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down and went to sleep. But an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked round, and there at his head was a scone baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him, and said, 
get up and eat, or the journey will be too long for you. He got up and ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he walked for forty days and forty nights till he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to each verse of the psalm is taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, taste and see, see that the Lord is good. good. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me, from all my terrors he set me free. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Look towards him and be radiant, that your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him, and rescued him from all his distress. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The second reading is a continuation of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, in which he continues to give his practical advice to the communities he's founded. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit or God, who has marked you with his seal, for you to be set free when the day comes. Never have grudges against each other, or lose your temper, or raise your voice to anybody, or call each other names, or allow any sort of spitefulness. Be friends with one another and kind, forgiving each other as readily as God forgave you in Christ. Try then to imitate God as children of his that he loves, and follow Christ by loving as he loved you, giving himself up in our place as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us acclaim the gospel. Alleluia. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Jews were complaining to each other about Jesus because he'd said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Surely this is Jesus, Jesus, son of Joseph, they said. You know his father and mother. How can he now say, I've come down from heaven? Jesus said in reply, Stop complaining to each other. No one can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. And to hear the teaching of the Father and learn from it is to come to me. Not, any, not that anybody has seen the Father except the one who comes from God. He has seen the Father. I tell you most solemnly, everybody who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert, and they're dead. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that a man may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You see how that gospel reading began. The Jews were complaining to each other about Jesus. Surely this is Jesus, the son of Joseph. They say we know his father and his mother. What's he got to tell us? Who does he think he is? to come here preaching to us, to tell us about God, 
to give us advice about the relationship between God and the human race. He's an ordinary man, an ordinary human being like you or me, isn't he? Oh, he is, yes. Oh, we know his mother and his father. St. John puts that account in this particular context. The other Gospel writers have it in different occasions to make a point. John puts it here to make a very profound point. No one can do anything of any value under his own steam. Unless he is with God and has God in him, we are all just ordinary human beings. We can do nothing of ourselves. And that's the link between the Gospel and that first reading about the great prophet Elisha. You see, Elisha is the great prophet and he's heard that he's a great prophet. But after a day's journey, he's sitting depressed, probably got mental health, under a bush on which he was dead. Lord, I've had enough. Take my life. Here it is. I'm no better than my ancestors. The pennies finally dropped for this great prophet. I'm only an ordinary man. I can't do anything under my own steam. I can't serve God as he wants me to. Jack it all in. Come on, God. Let me die and take me to yourself. None of us can do anything under our own steam. But in this fit of depression, when he falls asleep, the prophet is woken by an angel. Forget about wings, forget about halos, forget about long, bright, white nighties. An angel, quite simply, is a messenger from God, speaking on God's behalf. So this messenger with a message from God says, wake up. There's a griddle cake, or a scone as the translation has it here, and a jar of water. I'm giving you what you need, but can't supply yourself for your journey. And this is a symbolic account. The fact that there's a mountain, I mentioned earlier, mentioned, and 40 days and 40 nights, these are mythical terms. It's a symbolic story. He's underlined that fact. So when God is giving you the strength, when God is giving you this scone, this water that you need for the journey, take it. Because you can't do this journey, this journey through life, on your own. And this 40 days, this, this, this symbolic mythical amount of time, 40 days Jesus also spent in the desert, don't forget, at the beginning of his ministry, symbolic again. At the end of this 40 days, at the end of his journey of life, he reaches Horeb, the mountain of God. And again, as I said at the beginning, he reaches God's presence. Not through any virtue or strength of his own, but only by virtue of what God has given to him. So tie that up with the gospel meaning. The people in our Lord's generation see him as an ordinary man, as they are ordinary people, as we, 2,000 years on, are ordinary people. And yes, we can do nothing under our own steam, under our own power, but that's not something to be depressed about. It's actually something to be relaxed about. Because it's not up to us, quite literally not up to us. To do it by our own effort, by our own strength, by our own ideas. He will give us what we need for the journey of life. The journey to God's presence. And that presence begins here. And as we journey through life with God's gift of the bread of life, I am the bread of life, that's the food for our journey as the years pile on, as our journey towards God's presence, the mountain 
heaven in traditional Christian terms comes about. I'm the bread of life. I'm your sustenance for the journey through your life. It's not up to you. It's up to me and what I give to you. And it will always be enough to keep you going. And in this whole cycle of stories about bread and bread from heaven, it will be so much. It will actually have leftovers that can be shared with others as you make your way through life. That's the whole point of the reference to leftovers. We don't waste leftovers, especially not bread in our Lord's Day. We share them with the poor, the less well off, and those in need. Let us proclaim our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray for the Church. That the Church may receive the letter, the motto proprio from Pope Francis. That the Church may receive that letter with wisdom. It restricts the usage and puts conditions on priests to celebrate the Mass in Latin. Because Pope Francis sees a great danger there of us becoming a Church of an elite and a lower type of Catholic. His impulse in writing this letter is for Catholic unity, so that they may, may not be groups who see themselves as the real Christians at the expense of others. Lord, heal any pain those peoples and communities are feeling. Bind our church in unity of worship and honouring you. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious in us. Let's pray for leaders in the church, especially our own leaders, our bishops, deans, and others in positions of authority. That as we begin to leave the corona year behind, they may be given wisdom and insight by the Holy Spirit on how to heal our local churches and go forward with confidence and faith, spreading the word with renewed energy. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Let's pray for the success of the documents to come out in Liverpool Archdiocese concerning our synod. May they too give us inspiration, new direction, new purpose, and new hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Let's pray always for our sick and our housebound, and all those suffering as a consequence of that by any form of depression and mental health. That they too they receive the bread of life in many different ways, that they may too be sustained by our Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Sad news has come through that the drug companies are increasing their prices for the anti-corona vaccinations. Let's pray for generosity in men's hearts. I emphasize men's again. 
or in controlling positions in those companies, that they may be generous to the world and especially to those parts of the world that are finding the extra cash, the increase, and the troublesome, if not impossible to bear. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Let's pray for our young as the vaccinations come down for those in their 16 or 17 year olds that they may be protected from any side effects that they may be strengthened and cured of the corona affliction Lord hear us Lord, Lord graciously hear us Let's ask our Lady Queen of Peace who I have heard prayers to ours for all these things he said, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my many iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. God of power and love, giver of the gifts we bring, accept the offering of your church and make it the sacrament of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, most holy Father. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, made flesh by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. In fulfilment of your will and to gain for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints we too praise you as we acclaim with one voice, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy, O Lord, the source of all holiness. And so we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dew. So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and having given thanks, 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us welcome to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that in partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of forgiveness and love. Together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm our Bishop and all your priestly people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your friendship. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all so that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Holy Apostles, St. Paul of the Cross, St. Joseph, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may become heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have his encouragement to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day, so that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity accordance with your will. You who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's give each other a sign of his peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I said a word, and my soul shall be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Final hymn is Fill My House Unto the Fullest. Almighty God bless and protect you now and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.